Hi everyone, today we're gonna to talk about how to make patterns faster so that you can make more patterns, which in the end means you sell more patterns on print on demand, you license more patterns, and you just have more output so that you can generate more income for your creative business. A problem I've noticed is that many artists find they take hours or days to make a single pattern. And if you wanna make an income from selling and licensing your patterns, you need to make patterns faster. Of course, there are those complicated hero patterns that we all love making that might take a few days here and there, but we can't do that with every single pattern if our goal is to build a creative business or a creative income. That's just not a sustainable way to make patterns that sell. So we're going to talk about a lot of ways to make patterns faster, make color versions faster so that you can improve your pattern workflow. I'm Liz Kohler Brown. I'm a service designer and hand letterer who loves helping people find their style and sell their work. So let's dive right into the project. So I'm going to dive right into working with a pattern. Now, if you don't know how to make a pattern at all in Affinity, I do have a free Affinity 101 class linked right below this video so you can learn how to get here. But for this video, I'm going to assume that you already know how to make a pattern. So the first tip for designing better patterns is to make simpler patterns. You can see how this pattern doesn't even have veins on the leaf or highlight on the flowers. Now it could, but the simpler you make these, the faster you can make them, the easier they are to print on things like fabric that don't do well with really complex designs that have a lot of texture. So I'm showing you this design to show you, you know, your patterns don't have to have layer upon layer upon layer of texture. It's really fine to just do solid fills like this. Along those same lines, it's important to keep in mind if you are gonna add any kind of detail on top of your pattern that adds to the complexity, it needs to be somewhat thick. So I'm gonna grab the pencil tool here and I'll get a bright color so it's really easy for you guys to see the color. Let's go with a like pink color and I'm just using the pencil tool to make this fill. Can you see how thick I made that fill. So instead of it being like a really skinny line, like if we did something like this, it's not gonna turn out well on fabric and it's gonna waste time because the printer's gonna come back and say, no, we can't print lines that thin. So when you're starting out with patterns, just start out with thick details and even better, just keep it free of extra details. If it doesn't need that additional detail, don't add to the complexity by making it more complicated. The second tip is to stick to one SEO term per pattern. So this one, for example, might be the type of flower, or it might be the style like Art Nouveau, or it might be the era like the arts and crafts era. One SEO term per pattern is best. So I wanna show you an example of this. The pattern on the left kinda has two SEO terms, maybe even three. It's jungle, it's women, it's cheetahs. So we've got three different elements to this pattern that are really important to the concept. So let's say someone's looking for a cheetah pattern. If they find this and they don't want the women in it, they're not gonna buy it. They just want the cheetahs. Or let's say they want women they don't necessarily want the cheetahs as well. So yes, it's fine to have heroes that have a lot of different elements, but I think the majority of your patterns, especially for print on demand, should be more simple. Like the one on the right, this pattern has done really well for me because it's just tigers. Anybody who wants tigers is gonna like this pattern. There are no additional concepts or SEO terms that are conflicting with it that are gonna cause my buyers to say, well, I like tigers, but I don't like this other thing that you put with them. So the next tip is organization. And when you organize your patterns really well, it's easier for you to make color versions. It's easier for your clients if they end up working with color versions or working with your layers at all. So knowing how to organize your patterns really well is super important. So I'm gonna start out here on my layers panel and just show you what I currently have going on. So we have a background square. That is this background rectangle right here. Then we have the motifs. So the motif is the blue flowers. 
and the green leaves. So I have that, and then I have repeated versions of that on the corners. So the only problem with that is that I've got all these layers. Let me open this up. That means we have three or four layers for each motif. We really wanna keep it simple as possible. I would love to just have three things to change here, the background, the flowers, and the leaves. So I'm gonna clean up my layers panel to make that happen. First of all, I've just got some random little shapes in my layers panel that I don't need, so those are gonna get deleted. I'm not even using those, they weren't even turned on. Next, I'm gonna grab all of the flowers. So I'm gonna go flower, 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 drag it all up to the top here. Up here on the geometry menu, I'm gonna tap add. That merges all those shapes, so now they are one big layer. Now, let's do the same thing with the leaves. So I'm swiping all of the leaf layers. Add, let's bring it right there below my flowers layer. And then we get to delete all those groups. Doesn't that feel good to delete empty groups and clean up your panel? That rectangle background layer, that can go right below everything and we can delete that group. So now we've got three things, background, leaves, flowers. Again, if you're struggling with these steps, I cover all these steps in the Affinity 101 free course. So what we have here is a really simple layout. We might even want to name these. There's a little three dot menu right here. Tap on that three dots, tap on the word curves, and then let's name that flowers. Same thing, tap three dot menu, tap on the word curves, leaves, and then let's name this background. Three simple layers, anybody could open this file and know what to do with it. That is my goal. I want my clients to be able to change colors if they need to, if they purchase the option for color versions. So the other cool thing about that, let's go back to the gallery and swipe left on this document, press the duplicate button and open that duplicate. Now it's really easy to change colors. So I'm gonna go boop, boop, boop. I like all those colors. Let's go to a different palette here. Ooh, that's kind of a nice combo. So I landed on a combo I like, going back to the gallery, and we're gonna repeat that same process again. Swipe left, grab this. So if you have ever done color versions in Procreate, you know what I'm talking about here when I say, this can take a really long time if you have complicated patterns. So that was our first thing, right? Don't make complicated patterns. These are easier to recolor. They're easier to print on all kinds of different products and they take less time so you can make more patterns. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody when you just work a little bit faster, keep your work simpler. Don't you don't need to reinvent the wheel and make the most complicated patterns in the world. Not to say you shouldn't ever do that, Obviously, sometimes it's fun to do that, but when we're talking about making an income from your patterns and building up some sellable art, I think we all need to think about simplifying. So as I've been talking, I've just been flying through making these. Now I have one, two, three, four, five color versions. Hopefully that inspired you to see how quickly you can build color versions of your patterns when you work simply, when you organize your layers, and when you just have two or three elements to change rather than 20, 30 different pieces. So I wanna show you how this actually plays out in a finished pattern collection. So my recent pattern collection, Graham's House, is here. And for a lot of these patterns, I would do 10 or 20 color versions really quickly, flying through color versions, and then I choose maybe the three or four that I like best, but for me, I need that volume of color versions to understand what colors I'm interested in. So even though there's only like 10 patterns in this whole collection, you're gonna see, I don't know, 30, 40, maybe even 50 patterns in the actual collection. Same thing with my desert collection. I have all of these different color versions and even different color ways, like let's try a whole muted range. Let's try a whole neon range. And when you do it this way and you keep things super simple, it's really easy to make all those color versions. It's question time. This is the part of the video where I answer a question from the comments below my YouTube video. So if you have a question, go ahead and put it down there and I might feature your question next time. This is actually a question from one of my YouTube shorts where I showed my new art print calendar. 
So if you have never seen an art print calendar, it's a calendar where the size of the print is the same as an art print. So the customer can actually get art prints after the month ends. So they can cut it out, put it in a frame. It's a standard size frame that they can buy. And so I don't provide the frame, they provide that, and all they have to do is cut it out and put it in there. So they're kind of getting 12 art prints in addition to a calendar. So I think for most customers, this is a no-brainer purchase. The question says, this looks so gorgeous, congrats. Which print service provider do you recommend internationally or EU when students wanna print their own calendar with this awesome feature, having that one that doubles as an art print set just like yours? I love this question and I share my entire process from creating calendars, making the templates. I even give you your own template so you can make an art print sized calendar as well. I use Gelato as my provider and it connects to my Etsy shop so I don't ever have to ship an order. The customer places an order and it ships directly to them. So once I list it on Etsy, I'm pretty much done other than customer service questions. So if you would like to try this process, check out the link in my profile. I have a free calendar bootcamp where I share my whole schedule for producing calendars. And then I have a calendars class in my membership where I share the entire process. You can actually watch that with a free trial right now. So if you wanna see the whole thing, there's no secrets here. I'll show you how I made this calendar <laughs> and all my other calendars that I sell on Etsy. So go check that out using the link below. The last tip that I use to save a lot of time is the live pattern preview. Now this is something that's specific to Affinity. Obviously you can't have art boards in Procreate. You know that if you've ever worked in Procreate. You can't have multiple boards with different artworks on them. But what this app allows you to do is to sync shapes, like this shape is synced with this shape over here. So if I do something to that shape, it changes the full board. The cool thing about that, which you know if you've ever made a repeat pattern, is that you don't have to export your pattern to figure out if it looks good. You can make changes to your small block. So I'm making changes to the small block and that's reflecting over here on the bigger block. When I'm building patterns, this is just essential for me. It saves me so much time. I mean, I'll tweak one or two things and then I immediately wanna see what it looks like before I make any other changes. Whereas when you're not working with the live pattern preview, when you're just you know, winging it and then exporting every time, little changes that you make, you don't know how they're gonna look until you export and you're wasting a lot of time doing that export process even if you have like an app that does it for you or you can just like drag it into another app or drag it into another doc, that's an extra step that adds to your workflow. And then every single time you do that, you're not making art. You're doing a technical task rather than making art. So for me, the live pattern preview is probably the biggest time saver I've ever had. I do share how to do that in my membership, which you can get a free trial and learn how to make a pattern preview. And then if you wanna cancel the membership, you can, no hard feelings. I love showing people how to do this because it saves so much time. I especially love this live pattern preview when I'm doing patterns that require me to move a lot of elements around. So let's say for example, you're doing a kind of a scatter pattern like this and you wanna put everything in its place, you can literally just come in here and as you're pulling things into place, you can see right over here what's going on. So it just makes your life so much easier, makes it so much faster to build a pattern. Now that I do this, I cannot, literally cannot imagine <laughs> making patterns without this process because it has saved me so much time. And it's also just more fun. It's like I get to see my work as I do it. I don't have to wait for that big reveal when you put your pattern blocks together and see what they're gonna look like. I just see it as I work. So this is my favorite way to make a pattern. I would love to show you how to do it too. So come check that out. If you like this video, you might also like my video on how to vectorize drawings and paintings for pattern. That way you can take your pieces made on paper and turn those into gorgeous patterns. And my video on Art Nouveau style patterns where we go through the whole process of making patterns in an Art Nouveau style. I'll see you guys next time, bye.